a monkey, George. You're just not used to kindergarten. <laughs> George wanted to be a monkey who was good at kindergarten. What could he do? Now, castles weren't just for kings and queens. Butlers, maids, cooks, and carpenters lived in them, too. Lots of people lived in castles. Oh, I've always thought it would be fun to live in a castle, high on a hill overlooking the ocean. In fact, I would like each of you to draw a castle that you would like to live in. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yes, Allie. Um, what if we would rather live in a submarine? Then you draw a submarine. Oh, uh, now I have to go talk to the janitor. I'll be right outside if you need me. Huh. George had an idea. Instead of drawing a castle, why not build one? Mm. A castle for Mrs. Gold to live in. Oh -ha! Oh -ha! <laughs> what you doing, George? What's he doing? Wow. George, what oh -ha! <laughs> oh, you want to build a castle for Mrs. Gold? Maybe castles weren't allowed in kindergarten. Maybe he should ask. The bookshelves, the water, not a problem. But sand in a carpet, that's a problem. Uh, Mrs. Gold, George wants to know if he can build a castle instead of draw one. Uh, uh, sh sure, sure. I I'll be right there. Let me tell you about carpets. First, you got your shags. Then there's your it's okay, area George. family, uh, which is divided into the short pile and the deep pile. It's not easy building a castle. But George found a way. <laughs> With bookshelves and blocks for walls. And a curtain for the roof. And every castle needed a window. George's school tool made a great construction level. At last, the castle was ready. All it needed was a tree. Yes, well, thank you. That was most informative. I'm sure it will look... <gasps> oh, my! It was George's idea, but we helped. When you said a castle, you meant a, a castle. Oh, this is wonderful! It's amazing what you can do when you use your imagination and work together and have a monkey to help you. Oh. <laughs> Yay for George! Yay for George! It was good being a guest monkey. But it was also good being a plain old regular monkey on his way home. I think there's a picture in this book. Here you go. See that blob? Huh? That's a germ. Oh. Some germs are good for you, but bad germs can make you sick. <laughs> well, that's your body. Your nose, mouth, Stomach? <laughs> Those are your lungs. Uh. When you sneeze <laughs> or cough, <laughs> that's your lungs squeezing together and trying to force out the bad germs. <laughs> <laughs> Enough biology. Time for you to rest. <laughs> George didn't want to rest. He wanted to get rid of his bad germ. If only he knew how. <laughs> ah. 
George saw a face. A face he had seen before. <laughs> In the mirror. It was him. George's mouth was amazing. It was like a giant cave. A cave with an echo. A squishy floor, which was actually his tongue. And best of all, a spaceship. George could find that bad germ and get rid of it. just as soon as he figured out how to work that spaceship. George was amazed. He didn't know Gnocchi could drive. knew they were somewhere above his mouth, but where? Yeah. Fortunately, Gnocchi had discovered a helpful sign. They were in George's nose. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And they weren't alone. You better look out, cause Toots is in town. I'm in your nose. Achoo, he's in your nose. I'm in your nose. Oh, yeah, he's I'll make you sniff it out, make you sneeze. You won't be smelling that smelly cheese. Down to your belly. Down, down. Mosey, I'm down to your belly. Look out, he's in your belly. So don't eat a thing, that's my suggestion. Cause I'll, I'll be giving, giving you indigestion. <laughs> Boring. Ah, ah. Bingo. Now for the paint. Sheesh, <laughs> that billboard is kind of high. George, how about you paint and I'll supervise from here, okay? Uh -huh. Don't forget the picture. When George got close to the billboard, he could see things he couldn't see from far away. Like the fact that the billboard wasn't just one big sheet of paper, but six sheets glued together. George, are you done? Uh-huh. Uh, George? Huh. Did you paint the picture on the billboard the same size as this? Uh-huh, uh -huh. Oh, that explains it. You painted too small. I'll show you. You can't see small stuff from far away. 
So George resolved to paint big. He'd cover every last inch of that billboard. Oh, hi, George. How'd you do? Huh? It looks like you painted only part of the picture. Did you run out of room? George wondered how he could get a small picture onto a big billboard. Then he noticed something. The full marks on the picture were just like the rectangles on the billboard. rectangles here with the rectangles there. That'll work. Here, I'll make it easier. Six rectangles. Paint one at a time and you're good to go. Ah! This time, George was sure he'd get it right. What? George, come down here quick. Some juicer you've got there. Second best invention in the world. The first is my tasty health drink. <laughs> I know these are delicious, but we should save the rest for later, George. Okay, I think that's later enough. Mm. Boy, that was tasty. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Huh. <laughs> right, let's go. Where'd everybody go? Everybody packed up and left already. Huh? But don't worry, they'll be back next week. Oh? Uh. A whole week without juice? What was George going to do? You know, George, if we had our own juicer, we could make the drink ourselves. <gasps> There's a kitchen supply store right around the corner. Let's go. Yeah. Oh, boy. I have no idea how to use this, but when in doubt, read the instructions. Hmm. I guess there are no instructions. Oh, don't worry. Between a smart man and a smart monkey, we should be able to figure it out. Hello? What? Yeah, I'll, I'll be right there. Sorry, George. Professor Weissman needs me at the museum. They're picking a new shade of yellow for the main hall. I'll, I'll be back as soon as I can. Uh -huh. Ooh, hey. George figured a smart monkey all by himself should be able to work this thing. What did Juicy J say he put in that drink? It's got five fruits and vegetables, plus a special secret ingredient. Five fruits and vegetables, and all of them seem to be red. Mm. Apples are red, and peppers, and strawberries, Ooh. and watermelons.
George didn't know what cabbage was, but it was the last red thing in the fridge. Five red things. Oh. Now all George needed was a special ingredient. Ah. <laughs> oh. A red fish? Ah. Why not? Okay, so maybe raw fish is not a special juice ingredient. Lake Wanasink Lake is a very popular place in the summer. Ah! <laughs> Wait for me! <laughs> and on a really hot day, George's little legs couldn't get him to the end of the dock fast enough. Oh, oh there! Oh. Where is he? <laughs> uh, we have a saying on the dock, son. Look! Before you leap. Huh? Hey, what happened to all the water? Well, the dry spells lowered the lake quite a bit, don't you know? Not a good time to dive off the dock, but a great time to waterproof it. That sounds like a big job. Do you want a hand? Well, if you're offering, I'm sure not saying no. <laughs> If the water was gone, <laughs> where were the fish? Uh, I don't know where they are. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, Mr. Yellow Pants, we have to go find the fish. <laughs> Okie doke. Be a good little monkey. Uh, and girl. <laughs> Lake so he can be with his family. Yeah. Honey, Sally just cracked a tooth and I have to take her to the vet. You want to come? Sorry, I'm in the middle of rescuing a fish. Oh, uh, well, I don't think Sally can wait. All right. Well, I'll come back as soon as I can. Bye. For some reason, the lonely little fish didn't want to be rescued by a monkey. Oh. Ah, smooth strokes, you see. Nice and thick, so's the water can't get in. Looks simple enough. Good. Fill your bucket, and you can start over there. Where's, where's my bucket? Well, you forgot where you put it already? I, um, hmm, that's odd. Fish wanted nothing to do with monkeys or buckets. <coughs> if only there wasn't so much dirt, the fish could swim to the big lake all by himself. <laughs> George liked visiting Professor Wiseman because she did so many different things. This time, she was helping out on a rocket launch. And the man with the yellow hat was going to ride the rocket. So, you're ready to be the first average untrained person shot into space? I sure am. 
There's only room for one, George, but I have a special seat for you right beside me so you can watch. <laughs> this is Dr. Alvin Einstein and Professor Anthony Pizza. Wow, are, are you related to the famous... No, I'm not. Me neither. The International Space Station's food supply has run out. We found a peanut. It was in the cushion of my chair. This man with the yellow hat will bring your food supply today. So then it's okay to eat the peanut now? Well, oh, should he run away? No, I'm not sure. Oh, no, yes, I, I think so. I think I did. Yes, you may eat the peanut. So, uh, this is your rocket designed by Professor Wiseman. Oh. It's up to you to launch the food payload at exactly the proper moment. After it detaches from the rocket, it will connect to the space station. Can we count on you? Sure can. Professor Pizza and I are loading extra experiments you'll deliver with the food. George wanted to see what these experiments were. George, careful. This is an expensive high-tech... Uh, raccoon? They'll live at the space station so we can study how they adapt to life in space. <laughs> George could see into all the containers Except this one. What was hidden in there? <laughs> Show them the most important part. These keypads launch the payload. You hit these two keys on each pad at the same time. On all four at the same time? Yes, at the exact moment the rocket passes the space station. Uh, I can't. I, I only have two hands. Huh. The keypads were Pizza's idea. The raccoon was my idea. The four keypads was yours. Oh, here we go. Check your memos. I specifically remembered when you came up with the four keypads. <gasps> Oh, we have to scrub the mission. Or find an astronaut with four hands. <laughs> hey. <laughs> and wonder what was in that box. He'd seen how heavy these boxes were, so he gave a mighty monkey tug and found out he wasn't the only thing that weighed less in space. Toys! It was full of toys! <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor George. I hope he's not too scared being alone and out of contact. <laughs> George had never seen a top spin so long before. Space was a great place to play. George wondered whether these toys would be more fun if he had someone to play with. He's coming back into communication range. What's happened? Where's George? George, you must put the experiments away. Uh, hurry, it's almost time to send them to the space station. And at least he didn't free the ants. Huh? If ants get into the back, they might eat the astronauts' food. Huh? In 28 seconds, he'll be in position to launch the payload. <laughs> You have 
20 seconds to get everything ready to launch. But George wasn't ready in time. He's got to do it next time around. George, you'll only get one more chance. Then succeed or fail, we have to bring you home. We are really hungry. Hard to believe. But cleaning his room had prepared George for an important mission in space. Ready? George, are you ready to launch? Uh -huh. Excellent. I'll tell you when. Oh, maybe we shouldn't have sent a monkey. Shh. Now, George, now. George? Thank you, George. <laughs> You're in position to return home. Pull the lever to fire propulsion rockets. George, pull the lever now or you'll be out of position. What happens if he pulls the lever late? He could land anywhere. Top of a mountain, the North Pole. George, pull the lever now! <laughs> so, George was a hero. <laughs> and he proved just because you're a small monkey, doesn't mean you can't take care of everything ah. down to the tiniest details. <laughs> when you wake up bleary-eyed, normal things can look odd. Getting a drink of water? <laughs> and odd things even odder. Well, I'm training in gravity boots. Tomorrow's the big day. I'm scheduled to take my first rocket ride. Again. Uh, George, it's okay to look. Just don't touch anything. Uh, well, it's good to train for falling down, too, I guess. Good morning, boys. You remember Professor Einstein and Professor Pizza. So, are you ready to become the first normal guy to walk in space? No one on Earth is more ready or more normal. Just ask my monkey. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know your mission. Repairing the Einstein Pizza Space Telescope. Like this normal telescope. It makes faraway things look closer. But our telescope is much bigger, so it can see much, much further. Plus, it's in outer space, beyond the ruinous interference of Earth's atmosphere. It gave us these amazing pictures of distant planets and nebula, stuff out in space. 
but the controls got stuck and now it only points at Earth. Yes, in fact, it's aimed directly at Professor Pizza's kitchen window. All we've gotten for a month are pictures of Tony cooking and one of his dog licking a cake. And I didn't see that one till after we ate the cake. <laughs> to repair the telescope, you'll replace four cube-shaped batteries. Oh, here you go. You will also replace three cylinder-shaped gyroscopes. Gyroscopes help aim the telescope. It's hard for you to understand. I'll explain it another time. <laughs> Sorry, George. Too complicated for little monkeys. No, I, I meant you. Oh, <laughs> right. You'll remove the telescope's Grunsfield Smith nut using this wrench. When its lever is pushed to the left, it spins left to loosen. <laughs> to tighten it again, push the lever to the right, and it spins to the right. Wow, you hear that, George? Lefty Lucy, righty tighty, even in space. Yeah. <laughs> okay, it's time to launch. So when I spacewalk, I go out this door, then close it behind me, just like at home? Oh, you don't do anything. We designed it so it closes and locks itself automatically after you exit. Well, how do I get back in? I, I don't see a doorknob. Oh, there's a secret button, isn't there? Uh, uh, oh. Oh, don't tell me you didn't design a way for him to get back inside after the spacewalk. The automatic locking door was Pizza's idea. No, the automatic closing door was mine. He said, let's make it lock, too. Oh, we have to scrub the mission. Oh, no, please. Uh, what if someone else goes with me and opens the door from inside? There's no room for another man. Oh. <laughs> Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, ignition. George, we're in outer space together. I know. My job is to push this button and let you back inside. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> and don't forget, be a good little monkey space walker. There's nothing a monkey likes better than a spacewalk. Wow, that city kid really gets around. George knew what he had to do first. Remove the nuts using the wrench. Why didn't it move? He knew the rule. Lefty Lucy. And righty tighty. He wasn't the first monkey to mix up his Lucy and his tidy. Just the first one in space. <laughs> oh, uh, 
Uh, did I mention George only has enough air to last two minutes? Uh, well, you did now. George, you must complete the mission expeditiously. Huh? I mean, finish up and get back in the rocket very quickly. <laughs> Placements in was pretty easy. Huh? And then it wasn't. <laughs> Maybe he needed to put this stuff in exactly where the old stuff was. This last hole was a completely different shape. George, you need to head inside now. George? I'm going out there after him. You can't. You don't have a tether. Oh, boy. Why, it wasn't a different shape at all. <laughs> now he needed righty-tighty. George, you have only five seconds of air left. That's it, I'm going out. No, you'll float out into space. Did it. The telescope controls work again. Great work, guys. You're coming home. Oh, it wasn't two minutes. It was an hour and two minutes. <laughs> My mistake. <laughs> Ready as promised. Ah, it was worth living without it for three long days. <laughs> I'd rather carry it myself, George. You're not gonna wear your hat? No, I, I wanna keep it perfect till tonight. We're going to the opening of the new planetarium dome. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, let's get home before anything happens to my perfect clean hat. <laughs> well, we made it safely. Okay, now George, when I get back, we're going right to the planetarium, so take a bath. There'll be photographers there. I want you to look clean and fluffy. George was going to take a bath, just like he was told. It 
sure was a perfect hat. Who could resist trying it on? George wanted Compass to see him in the yellow hat. It'd only take a second. George saw the hat fly this way, but it disappeared. <laughs> the hat was back home and still perfect. Almost. George removed the piece of branch as carefully as any surgeon working on any yellow hat could. Okay, there was just a tiny thread there. No problem. Maybe he needed to pull harder. Or maybe it had to be cut off. George had forgotten that the last time he used his safety scissors was to cut his strawberry jam and banana sandwich. <laughs> it was only a small smudge. All he had to do was clean it off. <laughs> this stiff brush got the grill sparkling like new every time, and the grill got dirtier than the hat. <laughs> He may have scrubbed too hard. When I get back, we're going right to the planetarium. George had to do something fast. <laughs> oh, hello, can I help you? want a hat like this one? I have one just like it. <laughs> but it's exactly the same. <laughs> oh, you want a yellow hat. <laughs> okay. Well, that's the only yellow hat we have. I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> Gnocchi had never seen George look so worried. George showed her the problem. But cats think every wiggling finger is a game. They can't help it. <laughs> Maybe he didn't need a new yellow hat. Maybe all he needed was something like a yellow hat. Hunley tried not to wonder what George was up to. He really tried. But he had to know. <laughs> what would make a good hat? Yeah. 
Same color? Perfect! <laughs> Hunley had wanted to see what George was up to, and now he couldn't see anything at all. <laughs> Good color. Too floppy. Not floppy, but too pointy. Perfect. If he wanted to be the man with the drippy yellow bag hat. The man with the yellow ice cream stick pyramid hat. The man with the yellow blow-up hat. George realized that no hat he made could ever be the man's yellow hat. But the hole didn't look so bad when there was yellow paper inside. That was it. He didn't need a new hat. He needed to patch the hole. The paper looked good but something made of more hatty material would look better. Ah. Something like a yellow sock. George, did Hunley drop by for a shower, or is one of our towels running away from home? <laughs> George, where's my hat? <laughs> Gnocchi, don't touch my clean hat. It has to be perfect for tonight. George, why does my hat have a tail and a hole? George couldn't believe he didn't think of that. You see? It looks great. All right, we've got to go. Did you take a bath? <laughs> Fixed hat, fresh suit, clean monkey. I feel like there's something we forgot to do. George always liked the sights and sounds of the countryside. The tastes of the countryside were pretty good too, especially the taste of the Rinkins' homemade honey. You ready to sample this year's first batch of honey, George? <laughs> I packed some homemade bread in here to go with your honey. Enjoy! <laughs> if there was anything George liked more than sweet honey, it was eating it with freshly baked bread. But this bee wouldn't let him enjoy his snack. Now, where did it hurry off to? What could be more interesting than bread and honey?
George wondered how a flower could move when there was no wind. Touching all the flowers was definitely not as interesting as a bread and honey sandwich. <laughs> Who'd be mean enough to take a monkey snack? never seen a real live bear wandering around here before. The bee came back. It must have wanted to be friends. Well, that bee thought you were trying to hurt it, George. Bees sting to protect themselves. Now, just keep ice on that finger for a while and you'll be fine. Ah. Oh. <laughs> you want cereal again? You just had it for breakfast. No, George, a bee stung you. A, a bear didn't bite you. Besides, no one's seen a bear in these woods in over 20 years. But George was positive he'd seen a real bear. Hey there, George. Bill always seemed to know everything. Maybe he'd know about the bear. George, did you know no one's seen a bear around here in over 30 years? <laughs> George left those bees alone. Why couldn't they leave him alone? That's just a honeybee, George. Hey, they're going toward my yard. <laughs> wow, when did they build that? I gotta get those bees to leave. I don't want them to hurt my bunnies. George? George? It's a beautiful day, George. Why aren't you outside? <laughs> Come on, help me water the snapdragons. They're in bloom, see? Afraid of getting stung again, huh? Uh -huh. <laughs> hmm, I have to go to the Rankin's place. Maybe you should come along. I bet they can help you. <laughs> Hello again, George. <laughs> <laughs> it's us, Mr. and Mrs. Rankin's. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my, is that the bee sting we heard about? It's his first. Now he's feeling a little nervous around bees. Oh, perfectly understandable. <laughs> uh, that's why you'll like this. Ta-da! Bees can't sting you when you're wearing this. <laughs> you want to see something really neat? <laughs> Why, look there. <laughs> Don't worry, we're protected. <laughs> George, you ever wonder why bees like to crawl inside colorful flowers? Oh, they're gathering nectar. You can get close and watch. Now, as the bees get their nectar, their legs transfer a fine substance called pollen from one flower to the next. It helps more flowers to grow in the future. <laughs> Here at the hive, the nectar turns into the bee's food supply. Can you guess what it's called, George? Uh, honey, George. The same honey you like on your bread. Uh, the bees make 
more than they can eat. That's where we get it. Here's another jar for you. Enjoy. <laughs> George was amazed something so tasty came from something he'd been afraid of. He wanted to say thanks. <laughs> uh, not too close, George. Bees will get angry if you disturb their height. I'm staying to help with the hives, George. I'll be home soon. to launch these mud balls. They knock the hive loose, it falls in the can, then I take it to Mr. Rankin's. <laughs> yeah, it's not the proper way to remove a hive, but I need to act fast before bunnies get stung. George knew Bill's plan was going to make the bees mad. There's a proper way to remove a hive. Mm-hmm. Let's get those bunnies somewhere safe and call professional bee removers, huh? <laughs> <laughs> 